Hey, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and I have some fun things that I'm going to share with you is in a sort of a review of what's going on this week. I am really excited um, to be hosting a scavenger hunt challenge over on Instagram, and if you haven't had an opportunity to go check it out, I strongly urge you to do so. Um, the name of that scavenger challenge is Seek, Gather, Create. So you can go on Instagram and put in the hashtag Seek, Gather, Create and see all the incredible pieces that people are doing. I am hosting this along with my friends Lisa, Tina, and Melanie, and I will put their Instagram um, addresses in the uh the, the information at the bottom of this video so that um, you can go check out um, what they've got going on as well. Um, I know that mixed media means different things to different people. So what I've done during the course of this week and the next three weeks that we're actually going to be doing this scavenger hunt, um, I put together three different projects and I'll do the same next week as well. Most people are doing some sort of a journal spread, but I've also done an assemblage piece and an entire journal and cover and more when I get to that one. So I just kind of wanted to review through these, these three that I did this week. Who knows what I'll do, um, how many I'll do next week. But I wanted to kind of go through these and um, then I'll do the same next week. So this is kind of my review video of the week. For this week, our... Um, Four prompts. We each each one of the hosts is putting in a prompt, and you need to include all four of these um, in your mixed media project. So the first one is something black. The second was a feather. The third was something metal, and the last one was a thread or fiber. So you needed to find those items and then incorporate them into your mixed media piece. Now this is um, um, a spread in my art journal. And this one I did um, quite a bit of collage and that sort of thing. Where this one actually started was this piece of paper towel. Next to my water, I keep a paper towel that I just dry my brushes off and that sort of thing or wipe the brush off. And this one had, let me hold this up a little bit. It had some, whoops, there we go. Some cool colors with this um, turquoise and some pink and these bright splotches of orange and I'd been hanging on to it for several months because I knew it would come in perfect for something and it did and that kind of became the starting point from which I gathered all of these elements that I ended up um, doing more of a collage than um, a painting because most of my other things in this book which is relatively uh, fresh started this year is painting. Um, but with this one, I did some collaging. So I have back here my item that is black. This is um, the cover of a vintage book that had a big chunk out of it. So I had taken this spine off of and kept the two covers to use um, on a journal. But I hung on to that because I've become this, I, I was a hoarder before and now I'm even worse now that I'm into during all doing all of this mixed media collage stuff. So I used that, and then I have a couple of vintage book pages. This one has, um, I had used some encaustic wax to wax the paper, and it gives it this kind of cool translucency. So here's my feather right here, um, and then I have this old key. That is my metal piece, and then this I intended as my my thread or fiber, even though I have other threads and fibers. Let me hold that up so you can see. Um, and then these are all attached down with some matte medium. Um, I have a new one of the new Seth After stencils that I used on here. And I had this page bridge over the spine of the paper. And I just was very careful as I let it dry that I could still move <laughs> the page. Um, but I had some bits and pieces of things like this is a, from a gel print. This is some old Seven Gypsies. Um, tissue that I had done some, you know, just fingerprint type splotches on it to give it um, some cool color. So I used a couple of pieces of that. Um, but I was mainly going for just kind of um, 
interesting neutrals with interesting colors and some textures on it. I, I'm just super pleased and happy um, with how this came out with kind of this dark weight and going off to lighter, which is kind of what I've done throughout this book. It's it's kind of weighted one side towards the other. So I maintain that with this. Um, this was so much fun to work with and, and to play on. Um, I also want to show you some of the other things that I did. So this was my layout. And the four hosts of this we're putting on Thursday is when we're releasing our um, uh, journal page layouts. But any of us can do more as we want to. And that's what, what I have been doing. So I also did um, a reverse canvas assemblage piece. <coughs> Excuse me. So I had on the reverse side of the canvas, I had done some texturing with some crackle and stuff um, to give an aged look to the wood. And then I had um, found in my my ju junking kind of uh, uh, <laughs> discoveries, this is an old um, uh, door knocker that I had taken the knocker part off and I flipped it over because of the texture. The front is brass. It's, it's definitely an aged brass, but I thought the back side was way more interesting. So I flipped it over. And then this is a piece of beach glass. It's from the bottom. I don't know if I can turn it a little so you can see, but it's from the bottom of a bottle. Um, but I've had this for 20 years, maybe. So it was great to finally find the perfect home for it. So then I also have um, a piece of text paper in the background. And then this is a bit of a piece of taking apart a vintage book from the spine where it's got um, this loosely woven um, thread-like stuff that's the um, uh, that gives structure to the spine and then the old paper on it. So there's a couple of pieces on this side and this as well. And so then just added some buttons and other things just for some color and interest. And actually in the background, there's some stenciled texture in that dark background. Um, but I'm really pleased in here. So my black is, I have these little black elements. Um, here's my feather. Here's my um, cord or um, uh, thread. And then I actually have a couple of metal. I have the little star as well as the Nordocker is my metal. So there's my four elements in here. So um, I love doing assemblage pieces. This just, as many of you who know me well, 3D is my thing. <laughs> so anyway, so that's one. And I'll be doing an assemblage piece with the prompts for next week as well. And then lastly, which the first thing I did was I created a junk journal book. And I will be doing this for all four weeks. And then I'm going to take the, the empty books as where they are right now. And over the next several months, um, I will be filling the books and filming those as well. I'm not sure exactly what format or where I'm going to have that available, but stay tuned. I'll know here in the next couple of weeks how I'm um, going to go ahead and do that. Um, this was um, tons of fun to do as well. Um, in the background of it and on the back, I have some canvas that had been echo dyed a few months ago. And I just I love the color and the visual texture of this canvas. Um, on the piece on the front, I had a rusty can lid that had been um, in my sandwich that I echo dyed. And I just, I had, I've just been fascinated with this when I wanted to do something exactly like this. So I have some stitching um, that kind of emphasizes that circle with some little French knots, that sort of thing. I also have some old metal letter stencils that are some vintage ones. Um, so I included those on here. Here's my feather, which are dark with it. The book cover itself is black as well as some black here. But these are also black with that iridescence. One has a purple iridescence. One has a blue green. And I'm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sure they're from like a peacock. Um, this is a, a leaf found on the beach last week when my daughter and I went over to the coast. And it is probably one of the toughest leaves I've seen in a while. So it's, um, it's pretty strong and tough there. And then this is a piece of ceramic stuff that I've, I made 
a million years ago. It's got a little loop in here, so my, I have the feathers feeding up uh, through that. Then um, on the spine, I have used my um, removable um, signature binding um, a variation of it. The original one, the original one I have a video for that shows it with the spine um, pieces being tied um, and all the signatures, they have a binding bar in there and then they were tied on to the book. So this is the one that's in the video. With this one, and this is something that I'm gonna be showing um, over the course of these four books, is taking that same binding concept and just varying it slightly. So with this one, I love this piece of lace that I had found and I have it snapped on here and I have it very carefully on here so that, cause I'm not gonna be taking this off unless I'm removing any of the signatures. So this is snapped on so it's easier to access each of these. So then I can just unpin, put the pin back in here so I don't lose it. And then I can go ahead and remove the signature. So each of the, the five signatures in here um, is removable. And then, so that gives me the opportunity in here to go through and add whatever elements that I want in here. So I have some printed paper, some solid papers. Here's some um, gel printed papers that I've attached together with a fabric spine, craft paper, um, ledger type paper. I have some um, tracing paper, um, book pages. Now with the book pages, I always put some sort of reinforcing um, on the pages because so many of the books that I have are, you know, 100 years old almost. Um, and so I wanna reinforce where it's being pierced or folded. Um, and what I like using on these, and this is something, I have a video coming up on putting these books together, but I use um, this tacky stuff that is used for putting um, wallboard up. And as I said, I'll go through that more clearly um, on the video series that I'm gonna have about putting together um, junk journal type books. Um, Mixed media papers, dictionary pages, pastels, papers, um, just some cardstock. So each of the signatures has a little, there's some envelopes in here. Here's some of my Echo Diet envelopes, again, with the fabric spines to them. So five signatures in this one, lots of pages. Here's one that I've already started to do um, where I've added some, some texture and such to the sides um, of a jelly printed picture so our jelly printed paper so then these can just reattach back onto your spine because I like being able to take those signatures out and just work with just one signature at a time and not have to have the whole book so then this can all just be reattached so repinned back on and then I put the lace spine cover back over and it snaps on here on the back. And I'll be showing different ways to where this whole removable spine can be covered over and that sort of thing. But I have some different kind of little metal pieces. So that says authentic discoveries. Um, it just gives a kind of cool interest um, on the spine. And if maybe the the title of the book is not something you necessarily want to show. This is a great way to cover it over. So anyway, this one I will be embellishing coming up in September. And again, I will be posting as to how you access it, you know, that sort of thing, whether it's going to be a tutorial type thing that you purchase, whether um, it's gonna be on my Patreon or whether it's gonna be a freebie here on YouTube. I haven't really determined yet but there will be four different books and we'll be doing four over the course of several months, be filling um, the books up. So this one's titled The Art of Me. So this is going to be kind of more of a self, about myself kind of thing. But 
anyway, this, um, just this, with this video, like I said, I just wanted to kind of show you what's going on with the seek, gather, create. Um, you can jump in at any time and go back and do this first week. Tomorrow, Sunday, the 8th of August will be the um, second set of prompts. And you, so you can jump in and just start with this week two. Um, and then when you can go back to week one, but make sure you post your stuff over on um, this, the hashtag seek, gather, create over on Instagram and um, check back on my Instagram on Sunday. Cause in addition to the prompts, we also have a new sponsor that is joining us. And if you want to get in on the free giveaway, um, you'll just need to follow the instructions that um, come along with that. So anyway, here we go with the, uh, what we did in week one of Seek, Gather, Create. And I just want to say thanks for joining me and we will see you next time. Bye for now.